Movie Sword Training Course Tip 5. What's some cool long sword movie fight choreography that you can use for your reel or your own content? That's what we'll answer in today's video. Hi, my name is Dylan Wilson with CBT Stunt Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. We help actors, stunt performers, and filmmakers learn professional stunt training for use in film, TV, and live action entertainment. Before we get underway, if you'd like to add two-handed long sword movie sword fighting training to your current acting or stunt performer skill set, check out our highly popular master course at moviesoardfighting.com or click on the link below this video. You can learn sword attacks, sword counterattacks, cinematic sword draws, uh, sword choreography, you know, sword reactions, how to market your career, and more. Go to moviesoardfighting.com for more information. You can sign up now and start training now. Okay, so we get a lot of questions about movie sword fighting techniques and tips. So we're gonna share a few things with you. Now I'm actually an experienced stunt coordinator turned full-time director. This is something I planned from the beginning of my career, up to and including attending and graduating film school as a director. Along my journey, I learned that being a stunt coordinator made me a better director, and being a director made me a better stunt coordinator. Now, how this benefits you is that I can share with you insights and experience from both sides of the camera, as well as through all phases of production. When we thought about what would benefit you the most, we decided to do a six-part free video series that would teach you some of the basics. So you learn enough about uh, movie sword fighting to put together choreography for your reel, for upcoming auditions, and even your own content. For actual performances and highly competitive auditions, you need more training like what we provide in our movie sword fighting master course. Now why does this work? Well because for many self-tapes, sword auditions, and performances, you just have to look like you know how to use the long sword. I mean, after all, if you're not the lead or a featured fighter, you're gonna to get to throw anywhere from zero to two strikes, and then you get killed. Check out this clip from the movie Kill Bill. Now, how many strikes did each performer get to throw in that action sequence? Exactly. So in this video, we're gonna cover cool movie long sword fight choreography that you could use for your reel or your own content. All right, so there's two parts to the choreography. And each part can actually be the fighting with the same person or it could be two different people. So the first part of the choreography could end with the person falling off a cliff or you know off a roof or, or whatever and dying and then you're you go to face a second person or both could be with the same person so after the first engagement you reset and then start this is the great thing with movie uh, fight choreography is that you have a lot of flexibility when you know how to work it so one thing I'm, we're going to cover before we get underway and this will be more of a factor in the second part is on two-edged swords, double-edged swords like this, there are two edges. That's what I call double-edged swords, right? So we call the, the main edge that we're going to be cutting with the prime edge or primary edge. And the second edge uh, that is on the other side, we just call the second edge. So prime, second, primary, secondary. So in the next portion, just know that when you're looking at the sword, Different systems have different names for it. This is what we call it, prime edge, that's your primary cutting edge, and second edge, or primary and secondary. All right, so let's get underway with the first part of the choreography. And what's gonna happen is, in a previous uh, instructional, we share with you that one of the ways that you can do counterattacks is just delivering angle ones and angle fours for your opponent's attacks, and it'll pretty much cover the majority of stuff except for leg, leg attacks. So just an angle one and an angle four will cover everything. So we're actually going to show that with the first part of choreography. So your opponent, we're going to demonstrate your opponent's attacks first, then your counterattack. So the opponent very simply is going to bring in an angle, I'll keep, I'll stand still for this one, an angle three, an angle two, and an angle one. Once again, 
They're gonna bring in an angle three. It's easier than the figure eight. Remember the figure eights, All right? So an angle three, angle two, and angle one. That's gonna be their attack. That's all they do in the first engagement. Your counterattacks are gonna be literally ones and fours. So it's gonna be one, four, one. Once again, angle one, angle four, I'll slow it down. Angle one, angle four, angle one. Now, the difference is, and later in the video, we're gonna demonstrate this with a partner, so you see how it works with, uh, with two people. You get a lot of th fight choreography, and even uh, stunt fight choreography, empty hand, is being able to visualize things. So you have to be able to visualize this as well. So, what we just showed you was stationary. If you're not gonna just have a sword fight where you're doing like this, that's what's ridiculous. So you're actually gonna be moving when you're doing this, right? So your, your, your partner's gonna be moving and attacking you and you're gonna be moving and counterattacking. So I'm gonna demonstrate the, a partner, your partner's or opponent's movement while attacking. And you notice I just stepped forward on those railroad tracks. All right, one more time. Then I'll do it on the left side. Angle three, angle two, angle one. On the left side. Angle three, angle two, angle one. And we'll do it from the side so you can see what it looks like as well. I'll slow it down. Angle three, angle two, ang as you were. Angle three, angle two, angle one. Again. Angle three, angle two, angle one. So that's what it looks like from this side. This is what your opponent is attacking you with. You're initiating the fight. Your counterattack, I'm gonna do it with, with movement. You're going to be retreating, going rearward. Well, we'll just say going rearward, delivering the angle ones and the angle fours. So as they come in, you're gonna be doing like this. Again. Now do it from the side. Right? And we'll do it on the left as well. And I'll do a three quarters view. So that's the sword portion of it. Now there's one more piece that you're gonna add, this is for you, this is for you as the, uh, as the lead in this. And we're gonna throw a kick. So that last angle one that we throw, we're gonna press against their sword. So it'll be like a, almost like a stalemate. So their sword will be pressed here against yours in the middle. And what you're going to do is lift your, we'll do it here, one, yeah, two. Yeah. I'm gonna lift your right leg up and do a heel slam kick right to the center of their chest. So that's gonna be choreography. It'll look, it'll look something like this. So it'll be one, angle four, angle one, and you're back here. Do that from the side. I'll do it without movement, moving my feet. Angle one, angle four, angle one, and they'll be pressing against this. Angle one, angle four, angle one. Take a step and step forward. And to do that kick, think of bringing, uh, bending your, your leg, bringing your knee up to your shoulder, then thrusting out straight. It's almost like you're taking a great big step and you're hitting with the heel of your foot. Uh, in uh, stunt fighting, the place where we do make contact is to the body. So yet you do this lightly, right? Because it, it, it looks really fake if you don't hit to the, to the midsection. So with this kick, when you do it, you're gonna do it very lightly and your partner will give you feedback on it. If you don't, if you're not doing it, this kick, don't do it, <laughs> right? Yet if you're comfortable doing this and your partner is too, and you, you'll practice together, then you wanna do this. So one more time, angle one, angle four, angle one, right? And that's what, that kick knocks them back. That's what knocks them over the edge of the cliff, knocks them off the balcony, knocks them off the roof, or just knocks them away in the middle of the battlefield. And now you can reset for the second one. Now, We'll do this uh, with, from the left side with a three-quarters view. 
And this time I'll do, we'll do it with footwork. Angle one, angle four, angle one. And that's it. So that is the first part of the choreography. I'll handle counterattacking with angle ones and angle fours. So stop the video now and give that a try. Now we're gonna learn the second part of the choreography. Again, this can be the same opponent, opponent who just reset after you kicked them away and they're re-attacking, or it can be an entirely new opponent altogether. Now, if you don't remember the number, numbered guards referenced the previous video where we show you the 12 most cinematic guards, this one's gonna start from guard five, then go to guard one with the counterattack. So I'll demonstrate that now. And it's going to be uh, in left lead. So we're front stance head in left lead. Now I'll demonstrate that from the side so you can see it. And then I'll explain to you what actually happens. So we're in left lead, guard number five. Bring it down to guard number one. Now, I'm gonna to explain to you what just happened. And then I'm gonna show you on a, a fighting man dummy. So, your opponent is here with their sword. And when we, when we have this, if you notice, I'm using the thumb grip. All right, this is the thumb grip. And so, we start here in guard number seven, then we bring it down in left lead and we bring it down to guard number one. Okay, now on a, on a double-edged sword, we call it the prime edge, which is the main edge we're cutting with, and the second edge, or primary and secondary, or prime and second. Other systems may call it different things, yet yeah, that's what we call it. We call this the prime edge. So the prime cutting edge, it's already naturally aligned. Hitting this way with this edge is the second edge. So that's what we're actually hitting with. So their sword is in front of them just like this, and what we want to do is you want to clear that sword out of the way, boom, so we can stab them twice. And that's what's happening. So we are start from here, I'll do a three quarters view, and this is just kind of to fake them out. So as we move down to guard one, we're here, and actually we're in left lead. We take a step forward with the right foot, and with the second edge, we parry their sword out the way and do a double thrust. That double thrust is going to the belly and to the throat. Boom, boom, right? Boom, boom. Now, when they get stabbed, their sword got pushed to the side and they get stabbed, their natural reaction is to bring the sword back to parry your blade or to, or to block whatever they, whatever they decide to do. You Either way, the sword's gonna come this way. Before their sword comes this way, that's when we do a, a disengage and we do it, it's called an elbow circle. This is a shoulder circle. This is an elbow circle. This is a wrist circle. So that rotation takes place at my wrist, at my elbow, at my shoulders. We use those for different reasons, right? This one is rotating with the elbow. So as they come back in to parry my blade away, I'm going to cross up to the rear with my left foot, do an elbow circle, and knock their sword down. Then take another step and do a second elbow circle, which is going to chop their head off. And then the last step is I'm going to step forward with the left foot and do an angle two to their abdomen, and that ends the fight. So we're going to do that a couple more times. I'll do it with the PVC so you can see it, and then we'll even do it with the fighting mannequin. So once again, a lot of practicing with movie sword fighting is being able to visualize what you're doing. Actually, with all uh, stunt fighting, empty hand or, or with sword, you have to be able to visualize what your partner's doing and what you're doing because you're dance partners. You got to choreograph this dance together. So again, we're in front stance, left lead, and, and guard number five. We bring this down to guard number one. Again, we covered guard combinations in the previous video. Now, we're going to step forward with the right foot and parry. I'm exaggerating with the parry, but we're going to parry out with the second edge and then lean and do two fives to the stomach and to the throat. 
what they're going to do, because it may not hit them, remember, this is choreography. They may take a step back and they seek to parry your sword away and stab you. So what you're doing is before they can hit your sword, you're disengaging, right? You're disengaging. And that's what this is for. And if you notice, it's two elbow circles, two strikes with that. So as they come in to parry, I step circle one, circle two, All right? At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you the stunt reactions to do with it, so you'll see how they're reacting. And what happens is when we do those two circles, the first strike hits their sword down, and the second strike hits them here in the neck. And they'll use like stumble forward. And then that last angle two comes right up to the belly. Boom. And then you turn and face your next opponent. This is a longer sequence if you, uh, for, for if you're a featured fighter. Remember, you only get zero to two hits. You're the person getting hit <laughs> if you're the, the stunt performer. Yeah, you're most likely a featured fighter or the lead if you're doing the choreography that we're showing you now. All right. So again, I'm going to run through it a few more times from a different angle so you can see it. So we're here and guard five in the thumb grip, left lead. Come to position to guard one. Step forward, parry, thrust, thrust. I'll slow it down. Parry, thrust, thrust. They go to uh, parry or block. Left. Step to the rear with your left foot. Let me move back a little bit so you can see my feet. Step to the rear with your left foot, elbow circle one, this hits the sword. Step again, elbow circle two, hits the neck. Now we're gonna step forward with the left foot and deliver an angle two to the belly. That opens them up, all right? Now I'm gonna sh uh, show you this with a different weapon so you can see how this looks. It doesn't matter the type weapon that we use, this is a katana. So we'll do a three-quarter view. Front stance, left lead, guard five. Come down to guard one. We step in. And with the katana, we would use the flat edge because the primary edge or prime edge is here. We want to use the flat edge here to do that parry. So we come in. I'll do it here. Parry. They go on the block. They want to block the way like this yeah, before they can. Left rear cross step, hit the sword, cross step with the right, take the hit, step with the left to the belly. All right, finally, we're gonna show the choreography with an actual partner. So you can see some stunt sword reactions to the movie sword choreography. Yet before we do, check this out. Let's take a sneak peek and look inside this master course that was made by pro stunt coordinators, actors, stunt performers, and filmmakers for professional actors, stunt performers, and filmmakers, even content creators. By the way, if you're a martial artist, you're gonna learn how to convert your martial arts skills into movies and TV. And the first thing you notice is that we designed our platform to be very intuitive and easy to use. All right, the moment you're in there, whether you're on your computer or your phone, you can pretty much figure out what to do very quickly. Each one of our master courses start off with an introduction and a safety briefing, so you actually get to meet your instructors. And each one, you know, they go over the, uh, their background, their qualifications, that sort of thing, as well as going over an actual safety briefing. Now, we always want you to learn as much as possible, so along with that comes with your own cheat sheet. There's also a private online social community, which we we'll actually cover later. You actually get our email address and information to actually uh, reach us. This is the two-handed sword video breakdown. Covers swords, grips, stances, 15 attacking angles, everything to give you a, a strong, solid foundation. The two-handed sword master class. Now you notice that each, our course is broken down into units. So this is a unit, this is a unit, and each unit is broken down into a class or instructional. Each of these is an instructional. Each one's about 10 minutes long. We like to keep them about 10 minutes or bite size and not too long. Some are a bit longer because they have to be. And for the most part, they're about 10 minutes so you can actually learn more effectively. This one covers a lot of the sword counterattacks. We'll actually take a look at one here. The, um, this is a weapon shield hit four. So we'll take a look at this one. And you see everything is broken down, explained step by step, demonstrated so you know exactly how it should look and how it should flow. Now, one of the many other cool things is that we include what we call live action video displays. They actually are clips from movies and TV shows, so you actually can see, you know, what the choreography can look like when it's in a movie. So we'll take a look at one here. This is a clip from Kingdom of Heaven. And you can see how it 
actually all come together. So the stuff that you're learning, you see it's different than if you're doing combat as you're fighting because they're going to shoot it differently, they're going to edit it differently, and this helps you to really lock in your lessons. Here is this, a, uh, one of the, the most popular courses, uh, classes rather, in this course is the two-handed sword drawing and resheathing clinic where you learn all sorts of ways of cinematically drawing the sword. You know, when you can do a cool sword draw, they're definitely going to be, you know, favoring you in the camera. So let's take a look at one of them here. We'll go with this with this one. This is the sword in the earth position. Yes, you can see what it kind of looks like. And you see step by step broken down. You showed exactly what to do, how to do it over and over again. So it doesn't matter if you are a, a rank beginner, everything is, is broken down and explained to you um, so that you are clear on how to safely and effectively perform each of these, these movie sword sequences. This one is our monthly sharpen and polish video conference lab. Each month we do this and it's designed to actually help you with your career. Try it 48 hours risk free. After reviewing the entire course, if you don't like what you see and it doesn't work for you, we'll refund every penny. Who else lets you go through their movie sword training and then if you're not happy after looking at all the training, gives you a complete refund. Bottom line, we're passionate about making our customers happy and keeping them that way. So well worth the investment if you're serious about learning two-handed longsword movie fight choreography. Safety is paramount when doing sword choreography with scene partners. In the master of course, we cover a lot more things on safety, like leveraging the distance drill, a very important drill to actually embody. Also, um, at cinematically attacking your opponent's weapons. Also, leveraging near misses to increase dramatic tension in the scene, and a lot more. One other technique which we'll touch on lightly here, yeah, we cover in depth in the master course, is striking your opponent by breaking the camera line. All right, so we're gonna demonstrate now uh, breaking the camera line. And we're gonna do this with both angular strikes and thrusts. Okay, this is just one of the strategies on how to do sword fighting. Now, what you're gonna observe is, this is the sword, as I, as I cut across, you're gonna observe his reactions, right? Now we go to a belly strike. Uh-huh, without the grab. Uh-huh, now to the legs. The other leg, right? Back to the, the throat, right? And, and coming back. Now what you observe is that the strikes look like they connect, especially when you in post-production when they add, you know, Foley, all the sound effects and everything, and they may even put digital blood or something. Uh, yet the entire time we're doing this, as we mentioned in a previous video, we're on average, you're one to three feet away. Sometimes you're much closer, yet Sometimes you're three feet away. So we're gonna demonstrate the same thing from the side. So you see the distance, it'll be right here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. Ready? This is exactly what we were just doing. Belly strike. Then to the legs. And then to the legs. All right? And so what you see, this is called breaking the camera line. This is why learning movie sword fighting is totally different from combat sword fighting. Combat sword fighting, you're all up on the person, stabbing him and hitting him and stuff. Movie sword fighting, you could be all the way over here, yet from the camera's perspective, the camera doesn't have depth perception. Like, it's like if you only have one eye, right? The camera only has one eye, the lens. And so it doesn't have depth perception. So let's go back over here one more time. It can't tell, even if he's all the way back there. Now he's about eight feet away from me eight feet away from me, it still can't tell how close I am and it looks like I'm still hitting him, right? And we'll even do a couple with the thrust too. So we'll do a thrust to the belly. Let me just, let me aim at him. Uh-huh, without the grab. And then a thrust to the chest. Uh-huh, one more time. That's it. So this is called breaking a camera line. Pause the video now and practice doing it. Practice doing it and also practice receiving it. Because you can actually do this to yourself in a mirror or phone, you know, if you have your own sword, you know, practice. When the sword crosses your center line, your nose is when you react. So don't react too soon, don't react too late. When it crosses the nose, that's when you want to actually react. So pause the video now and give this a try. Now some of you understand, you can't learn this kind of stuff in combat sword fighting. This is a different art form altogether. And this is for why people who actually train in combat sword fighting and they start learning movie sword fighting, they're like, okay, I get it now. Not like the stuff I used to do before. 
So to finish up, now we're going to demonstrate both sides of the choreography. So you can see different ways of telling different stories with the exact same sword choreography. A very important skill for stunt performers. All right, so now we're going to demonstrate the first portion of the choreography. Again, since we're actually actively doing choreography now, you notice we both have our eye protection on. What you're going to observe is we're going to do this at different speeds. We have quarter performance speed, half performance speed, and performance speed. We're going to demonstrate everything at quarter performance speed so it's easier for you to see it and learn it. And you'll notice at the end of the choreography, it knocks him away where that could either kill that opponent and it could reset with a new opponent. I'm not going to, I'm going to take the microphone off because I can't move with the microphone on. And what you notice again, this is a quarter performance speed, so it's very, it's, it's very slow, so you can observe how it looks. As you practice more with your partner, you increase from quarter performance speed to half performance speed, and then finally to performance speed. And performance speed is not combat speed. Combat speed, you can't see the, the sword move, so that's not good for, uh, for film and TV. So like you saw when he stumbled back and reset, when he resets, that sets him up for the second part of choreography, which we're gonna demo next. Or again, he could have been kicked out, out of frame altogether, falling off a cliff into a, you know, a, a pit or something like that. So pause the video now and give this a try. All right, now we're gonna go on and demonstrate the second part of the choreography. We're gonna go a quarter performance speed. And you're gonna observe everything that we did before with a partner and observe the distance of the sword, even with the thrusts in relation to my, my uh, partner. Now, during the reset, when you're resetting between the two choreographies, uh, you can have your scene partner flow through two or three of the guards as well uh, before the attack while you're doing the same thing. And again, this just builds up dramatic tension as opposed to just breaking apart and instantly clashing back together again. So to, to get more production value out of the fight, I refer back to the, the, the uh, 12 cinematic guards and each of you do two to three cinematic guards and then you initiate the attack. Also. Feel free to play in your area, yet not too much. As we covered in a previous video, the blocking has already been determined by the director, DP, and stunt coordinator. So you don't want to be moving around a lot. So it's all right though, if you're like shifting your weight back and forth, or you're only moving your feet a, a few inches. Uh, and this also helps to build dramatic tension in the fight, as well as raises the stakes. Next we'll do it with a different weapon. I'll actually use a uh, two-handed battle axe just so you can see how it looks with different weapons. All right, now we're gonna demonstrate using the exact same choreography on my part. We're gonna tell a different story and the first two thrusts that you initially saw that hit him, now they're going to miss him. And see if you can follow along with the story. This next one, we'll, we'll do it. Again, we're going to tell a different story, and I'm going to use a Ghanaian two-handed sword.
Now these are just a few ideas for telling stories that audiences will love. Now go have fun doing your own sword stunt reactions. Watch yourself in the mirror or record it with your camera phone when you do it to craft the perfect performance. Pause the video now and give it a try. All right, so of course it had to start raining today. So like this video and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the sixth and final video in our six part uh, movie sword training course. Also make sure you sign up for our Pro Stunt Tips email newsletter to get professional movie sword training tips in your inbox. Lastly, if you'd like to know more information about our two-handed longsword master course, go to moviesordfighting.com or click on the link below this video. Prepare to have your mind blown. Again, my name is Dylan Wilson, working out in the most wonderful weather in the world with CBT Stun Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. Don't miss our next video where we share with you another movie sword training tip. See you next video.